Hey, in today's video we're going to build a vertical wind generator which means no slip rings um, or anything complicated like that. We're also going to use <coughs> a high voltage DC motor. The perfect one for this build is a DC motor out of a treadmill, an old treadmill. You find them on roadside pickups. People are basically giving them away if something goes wrong with the um, electronics in them so they're easier to find and the good thing about treadmill motors here in Australia is uh, they're about 180 volts DC is what they run on <coughs> and they also have a big flywheel mounted on the shaft and the motor also has a good size shaft in it so perfect for this operation because we can generate over our 12 volts at very low speed and I'll give you an example uh, if you watch our meter and how fast I'm actually spinning this to get over 12 volts which we're at now 14 volts there, 15 volts 16 volts so um, <coughs> the wind generator doesn't have to spin very fast at all to start generating power the other good thing about it is it's cogless unlike most of the uh, three phase generators there's no cogging at all and it spins very very freely uh, being a DC output we don't need rectifiers to convert our three phase AC output into a DC output all we need is a regulator that regulates uh, the amount of power going into our battery which is volts times amps so we regulate our voltage and thus doing so we also regulate our current so the only other thing we're going to need for this uh, major part is a big drum that we're going to cut in half I'm going to be using a plastic drum you can use whatever size drum you want and we then need to make a carrier across this flywheel uh, to carry our two half drums. So let's hit the workshop and go and build this thing. Okay so the next thing you're going to need is a big drum like this one in the picture and we've got to cut it in half vertically to give us our two halves to go onto the rotor. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to trim the top lip off the drum as well uh, right down to the flat piece you can see right here so I'll just cut this bit off here that top half and leave this flat lip all the way around add a bit of strength to it and lucky for me this drum was made in two halves and joined because there's a seam that runs right down the middle across the bottom and back up the other side so it's going to make cutting it in half really easy so uh, how you go about cutting it in half and what size drum you use is totally up to you uh, remember the bigger the drum the more torque you're going to have from the least amount of available wind so it's really up to you as to what size drum you use one half that size would work quite fine keeping in mind the bigger the drum the more solid your base has to be that's bolted to the motor so as it doesn't fly to pieces which may well happen when we test this thing so I'm going to go and cut it in half and then we'll come back and have a look at making the base to fit the motor and try and get it as balanced as we can. Okay, our drum is cut in half and when we put these two halves together what we want to make sure of is that there's a slight overlap like so. So I found because this has got the tapered top and bottom on this drum I line these two bits up here, the two flats where I've cut the lip off um, that's about a perfect gap there. So what happens is the air gets scooped in here creates a high pressure system goes around inside our gap here and also puts a pressure on the backside or the leading edge of our rotor as we will call it so a little bit overlap not too much and the second effect is that the wind being diverted off here also shoots into our drum that is supplying the force on the rotor or drum half should I say so a little bit of overlap but not too much um, now we're going to go and cut the base 
and what I've found for that is this thing here this is a bit of flat aluminium fencing tube and if we have a look inside it's got these strength ribs in here um, so I'm going to use this to bolt onto my rotor so I have to measure my lengths I need to go across my two drums and drill a hole in the middle to fit over the shaft of our motor we're using and then we can screw our two half drums to this so that should work out fine we'll see how we go okay well we've finished drilling and tapping our flywheel on our motor and I've found some nice stainless allen key bolts to make them easy to do up so all we've got to do now is bolt our drum carrier to our rotor and then make up a stand or a carrier to take the motor itself which is really quite simple so I'll go ahead and I'll bolt the rotor up to the motor and then we'll make a little stand uh, so everything stays nice and firm when we're trying to bolt the drums on which will be the fun bit okay so I'm just using a rim and tyre for the moment it's got another rim welded inside it I don't know what the young bloke was up to but we're using it looks like a scrap project and a bit of angle iron welded to that rim and our motor is simply fixed to the angle iron by a couple of hose clamps so we can fill the rim and tire, well we can fill the tire up with water if we need more weight but this is only a temporary mount so as we can see if this thing's actually going to work so the rotor's all bolted on, that's all ready to go um, we have got it very very close to centre and well balanced all we've got to do now is bolt our two drum halves to that uh, rotor and we're set to go. Now because the drum halves on the bottom are only going to be sitting on half of the width of our rotor, I'm going to cut out some 12mm timber bits to screw to the bottom of the drums and then screw the whole lot down through the rotor just to give it a bit more stability and then we'll put a stabiliser bar on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and do all that and see how it looks when we're finished. Okay, so there's our wind turbine finished and of course when you want to test it there isn't a breath of wind. Dead calm. Uh, absolutely typical. So what we're going to do is just hit it with a uh, bio fan and watch it spin around. Okay, so the fan's a fair way away, probably uh, three metres, and it's one of them little castle blower fans. But um, at that speed, it's putting out 14.6 volts, so enough there with that small amount of wind to uh, charge a 12 volt battery, no worries at all. Total cost, not very much, uh, probably 30 bucks. If you can find a uh, motor on the side of the road for free, Pick yourself up a drum, a bit of labour, maybe a bit of timber, and uh, some way of fixing it, fixing it to the ground. And there you have it. But seeing as it's stinking hot, in the next project, we're going to build ourselves an air conditioner on the cheap. See you then, guys.